No doubt you've seen them in the field. They often display behaviors that any normal person would find strange at best, or at worst, flat out nuts. If you've ever wondered what's wrong with these people, well, you're at the right place. Today I'm going to share the top 10 strange behaviors of a landscape photographer. Number one, sometimes they can be seen from afar, standing for long periods as if they were staring off into space. Often, they're behind a tripod meandering about. They seem to have no purpose other than merely standing and staring intently at an object. Indeed, they seem to see things that aren't there or things that others can't see. Although this strange behavior seems very unorthodox, there's a method to this madness. It's merely a keen observation of everything in the scene. The landscape photographer looks for leading lines, keeps the rule of thirds in mind, and scours the scene for interesting foreground elements. Indeed, this strange practice is merely an attempt to shape and visualize a composition. Number two, landscape photographers often talk to themselves. Some speculate they have imaginary friends that help them with their photography endeavors. In fact, many of these conversations are extremely intense. However, as it turns out, these so-called conversations and open outbursts are merely manifestations of internal debates. This behavior is not uncommon as the landscape photographer works the scene, thinking through ideas or when needing motivation or a self-pep talk. Indeed, in an abstract world, landscape photographers routinely talk to themselves as they battle the weather, environmental conditions, and the technical limitations of equipment to bring their vision to life in a single image. Number three, they're often seen traipsing about the forest, sporting large backpacks with peculiar equipment and weird gadgets. One gadget was reported to be some type of laser, while another was thought to be a device capable of seeing into the future. A local passerby had called the police, fearing that an alien abduction was in progress. However, following the landscape photographer's release from police custody, it turns out he was merely using a powerful flashlight and a view catcher to frame a composition. Number four, they carry a tripod everywhere. They've been observed standing behind it for long periods while taking only a single photograph. Despite fallacious reports of stalking, a landscape photographer may indeed stand behind a tripod for some time throughout a sunrise or sunset. It's quite routine to capture several images at various intervals under different light. This allows the landscape photographer many options in post-processing. Indeed, it's often difficult to notice subtle changes in light. A couple of minutes between frames can make a significant difference in the quality of light on the subject. Number five, they often carry big cameras with massive lenses. Onlookers have reported seeing landscape photographers carrying extremely large spy-type cameras with outlandishly long telephoto lenses. Indeed, some lenses were reported as ultra-wide or bulbous. One account suggested the photographer may have been a foreign spy. In fact, the witness was quoted saying, I don't understand why he needs that big lens when a smartphone is good enough for picture taking. Although these misleading reports are common, the landscape photographer was merely using a high dynamic range full frame camera with an ultra wide angle lens. Indeed, he was attempting to make a composition from the vision he held in the mind's eye. Number six, landscape photographers are often seen sporting tactical knee pads. Sightings of camera wheeling persons in tactical gear, kneeling and crawling about do appear quite strange. One report noted someone observed a landscape photographer using weird hand signals in an attempt to communicate with local wildlife. Indeed, the photographer was attempting to communicate with local wildlife as he frantically swatted away mosquitoes. Although these reports occasionally happen, landscape photographers routinely use knee pads to move freely about the scene while comfortably composing even the most difficult compositions. Number seven, they often wear strange or odd looking hats. Although these hats may appear oversized and out of place, they provide excellent protection from harsh sunlight and inclement weather. Moreover, these large brim hats deliver excellent protection from tree branches and spider webs while traipsing through the forest en route to a composition. Number eight, sporting polarized sunglasses, knee pads, odd headgear, and strange gadgetry, it's common for locals to mistake landscape photographers for a government agent investigating a UFO landing. Indeed, these so-called landscape photographers have been seen wearing polarized sunglasses, shifting their heads side to side while using an unusual form of sign language. Despite a few frightened eyewitnesses to these strange behaviors, the use of polarized sunglasses helps landscape photographers simulate the effects of a circular polarizer without having to place the polarizer on the lens. Indeed, circular polarizers reduce glare and reflections from bodies of water or wet surfaces. They can also help cut through haze and improve overall contrast. Number nine, 
Despite being mistaken for agents and UFO hunters, landscape photographers mostly travel alone as the sun is approaching or, or even moments after the sun is dipped under the horizon. Although this behavior can seem unusual, landscape photographers understand the value of quality light. Indeed, this time of day is commonly referred to as the golden hours. It's under these conditions that soft and often colorful light can illuminate elements of a composition and deliver stunning and breathtaking results. Indeed, finding the discipline, making the time, and having the resources to be present during these magical hours is often challenging or even impossible for many people. This is why landscape photographers are rarely seen and only in small numbers. Number 10. They arrive well before others and leave long after everyone is gone. Although Bigfoot is occasionally seen in the wilderness, more often than not, it's a simple case of mistaken identity. On occasion, a landscape photographer may even be mistaken for a nocturnal animal. However, it's not uncommon for a landscape photographer to arrive at the scene several hours in advance. The making of a magnificent image often requires hiking to and from the scene in total darkness. Being present at the right place, at the right time, under the best light, is the dividing line between a landscape photographer and a tourist. Indeed, planning is essential to success in this strange but tremendously rewarding business. As the saying goes, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. Although in most of the cases mentioned, the untrained eye of the typical passerby may see these behaviors as strange or outright bizarre, but these are indeed the behaviors of a hard-working, steadfast landscape photographer attempting to deploy skills acquired through many years of practice and patience, one hopeful of making a unique and stunning masterpiece from what most people take for granted and see as unremarkable. I hope you found this video interesting. If so, you may want to check out my video on four things that separate a landscape photographer from a tourist. I'll leave links in the video description. As always, if you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing. And if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail.